and welcome back to another video by Daniel and John and today we're looking at how we'll get some central heating inhibitor and put it in via a radiator. We're having to do this because our boiler doesn't have a port or container attached to the boiler integral in it to put it in because it's cost saving. And what product are we using? So we're using Fernox and uh, central this, heating protector F1. Yeah, yeah. so the, the reason we're doing it is we've got cold spots in our radiators, we've bled them. At loads of air as well. Loads of air, but when we've been bleeding them, we can see there's just clear water in there. So nobody's bothered to put it in there. So I'm gonna run you through how we would do it. And the tools we need as the well. The tools yeah. you need, but just stress, this is to put in via a radiator. Ideally, do it on the ground floor, it's easier, because if you get any leaks, you don't want to come through the ceiling. So what tools do we need? You may need, posi driver or a Phillips head screwdriver. And the reason you might need this is that you need to turn this valve and it's like the skinny one. It's the balancing valve, this one, yeah. Sometimes it's got this on where you can turn the valve off yourself. Other times you'll see that it's just got a white smooth cap with that screw on. You just take that screw off and you turn it to the left down to the floor, going down like that with say some mold grips and you turn it until it stops turning. It's clockwise isn't it? Yeah. To shut it off. You might just want to put some penetrating spray in there if it's not been turned off for a while. This stops any water coming back into the radiator. That's what you do. Your second step. It's that one there isn't it? Is this is your thermostat and you turn it to zero there. Then what you want to do You've got a jug like this with these corners on, it's plastic, it always fits right under here. Just get your radiator key, which you do, and release any air. There's no air in there, we've released that. Let's turn it back up. The next step is to place your jug or bucket or bowl, whatever you've got underneath. You now need to take this out. So this is on the right hand side, isn't yeah. it? There we go. Now we have loosened up already, and you can see because it has got, hasn't got any inhibitor in it, there's sludge and muck in there and all sorts. So it's, it's not good. Um, it could really do with flushing through with a cleaning thing, but this is just to get the radio stuff and running again. So why did why have you taken this one off? Because right. we need to fit something, don't because we? Because you will need. Something like this. So it's easy fill, central heating, dosing. What is that? Dosing, dosing, funnel, just in case you want to buy that. And basically, what happens is where this came out, this goes in. So we fit that. Fit that. Doesn't have to need to be super tight. And in a minute, what we'll do, we'll pour our Fernox in there. And there's 500 millilitres in there, isn't there? So what we need to do, with our jug under here, we need to make sure that we've, there's uh, 500 there, that we've taken 500 mil of water or a little bit more out of here, because if we don't, that's just gonna flood back out. And how are we gonna do that? So what I'm going to do is just crack this nut here and basically, Create a leak. Break, break the seal, yeah. Now, I know this is easy to undo, but if you're doing it for the first time, you're not sure, get some mold grips. If you search for the, those, they're called uh, yeah. Irwin Vise grips, they're very lock, handy tool. Lock those on there, that stops any pipe bending, and then undo that. Right, so obviously, we're do now. we've cracked that, so we're good. Just gonna loosen that off. So you see we've got a leak. And that's what we want is a leak. So it's just going to let that fill up to about 500 millilitres, then we can put off Fernox protector of F1 in. So what we'll do is we'll let that drain and then we'll come back to you. Hi, yeah, so we've extracted that 1000 ml water. A bit more than we needed to, but that's uh, fine. We've tightened that back up. So we've got no leaks to support it there, so you're not going to bust anything. Now our next step is to pop this in the radiator 
We will have to fill the central heating system up a little bit after this as well. We'll go through that with you as well. So, yeah. But we do, I think we have a video on that then, don't we? Yeah, we do, yes. It's Fernox here. Yeah. Right. So, but this what does, liquid is it? It's like a brownie. It's like a light brown straw varnish. colour, yeah. yeah. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to tilt this to myself. I'm just going to pour it all in. Just make sure we haven't got any leaks around there. Looks all right. It's going down. A little bit of a leak, but nothing too horrendous. So what we'll do is and we'll it's going down. We'll get this. Um, we'll start filling that up. Now, here's a little trick. Just watch how quickly that goes down. When I release the bleed valve. Yeah. So that's just so so keep the bleed valve open when you're putting this in. So it lets a bit of air pressure out, doesn't it? Yeah. And obviously it's going down. It might take a minute for it to fill it up. And I say 16 radiators. So as you put that liquid in there, you can hear the air coming out of this. Because there's positive pressure here, it's all sealed and it's pushing any air out in the radiator. So if, if you're topping this up, and it just won't go down. I think it's blocked, try that. Is it? yeah. Just undo your... Try this, anti-clockwise. Yeah. And that's the way you bleed your radiators. Okay. So, it sounds like a very uh, weak set of bagpipes that, but so the more I put in, create more pressure here. So that's the whole thing in there now, isn't it? Yeah. Whole so bottle. On. And uh, don't forget to remove your sticker, like I said, and put it on your boiler. Put it on your boiler. So you know where it is. So it's got a thing on there, isn't it? Twenty. Top. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll just let that uh, go down. So now we need to put the uh, plug on the right hand side back. Uh, we've given it a bit of a clean as much as possible. We've cleaned the plug. It's got like a rubber O-ring around it. It's old. You may want to replace that, but we're not, we're not going to because we don't so have one. I'm going to use some of this uh, lovely LXS, which is... Uh, so this is also Fernox LSX. Good for another Fernox product. I'm sorry. Just sealing, mate. Call this your belt and braces. Just put a little bit of that on there. Just round the thread. That's enough. Because the thing with PTFE is it's quite rough in there and it ends up pulling it off. I might just put a, a little bit here on that. You see where the washer fits in? Yeah. Because that is so old, this. Yeah, these radiators are very old, probably 15, 20 years plus. So again, this fur notch we've got here is five pounds from Screwfix. And it works on central heating systems as well, doesn't it? So if you've got a little drip somewhere, it's, it's just ideal to have in house that's really useful. So we're going to pop that back in, give it a good clean up and we've clean the inside. So you can tell you can tell it's old and it doesn't go in very well. There you go. go. It went in a lot better since we cleaned it up. This LX will go off underwater as well, which is quite good. I find these fiddly. You could do this up with a socket set, I think I already said that. And undo it as well. Or if you've got like one of those tube sockets you can just put on there. I've probably got one somewhere, but where that is is a you're gonna use an adjustable span make sure it's a a fairly good quality one. I uh, can't remember who this is by, but today's tool. Yeah, it's, like it's a plumbing. It's a flat. It's a, it's a plumber's one because it's got flat edges, yeah, not and round. It does. Right. That's that's really tight. And then just wipe it around with your hand. Really. So we've got the got this part tightened up at the bottom. We've done this. 
practical. We drained it. We filled it up with Fernox. We drained all the water out before that, and just need to need to tighten that back up for a minute. We're going to let the water back in now. And that's just doing. So, so as you can, can hear, hear the can water's hear. coming back in. Yeah. You may want to let a little bit of air out of this yeah. as the water comes back in. Mm -hmm. So this is why I've got my bucket with me as well, because it's just handy instead of wandering off. Looks good to me. Yeah. Right, so what we'll do now is we will check the boiler to make sure it's got enough water in there. And if it isn't, we'll just top it up because we've taken nearly a litre out of the system. Yeah, it's quite a Obviously, bit actually. It's the water that heats your radiator, so yeah. we'll check that. We've got no leaks anywhere. But we'll run the central heating system as well, make sure yeah. that once it's so hot, it doesn't cause so any problems. Are we going to show how to top up or? Can do, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go upstairs where the boiler is and just show you how to top your central heating system back up if you've got low pressure. Right, so we're upstairs now and I'm just going to show you how to fill up your central heating system. This is a combi boiler. There's your analog dial there. It might have a digital one on the front. Ours doesn't know because it's an older unit. You want the pressure between one and sort of 1.2 and 1.5, 1.5, 1.6 bar. Ours is sort of in the middle between one and two, so that's fine. Uh, they have something on it called a filling loop, two pipes, so it's cold water mains in and into the actual central heating system. And there's two valves, you basically open them just a little bit and then let the dial come up to where you want it, what I said, and it all just on the front, and that's how you fill that up. And then, you may just keep an eye on that, you may need to add some more at a later date. Hi, welcome back, it's all done. Uh, boilers top back up, radiators on, and it is, does seem a lot hotter than it was before, but it's just me thinking it. So I thought we'd just recap and um, what tools you need to get the job done. The basic tools you need and the equipment and consumables. So you need your central heat protector, you need your- Easy fill. Easy fill adapter for going in there. You need your spanner for taking that nut off or a socket so you can get your easy fill in. Uh, you need a jug and you need your spanner again to loosen that off to take at least 500 mils out of your system. You need a little radiator key that helps get the air out of your system but also helps when you're putting your Fernox in or inhibitor in. Uh, reduces the, the pressure in there and allows it to flow in, otherwise it just sits in there. So that's simple, but it's essential. Um, the little problem we came across, only a small problem, is that when we turn this all the way down to the floor to turn it off to stop any more water coming in, and when we turn it back on, we have a slight, slight weep. Now that's because I doubt very much in the last 10 years that's been touched, that valve. Okay, so, a simple way of fixing it is to, when everything's tightened up, is to turn it all the way open so it's open. So you're turning it right towards the radiator and then smear some of this on the stem all the way up and then turn it back in a couple of turns. Because uh, it was coming out, the, yeah. it was, it was, as John said, it was the water was coming yeah. up through the stem. Make sure you rate your heating's off so you haven't got too much pressure there. And what will happen is that will set and it's a quick fix for you. Because what happens if, what happens, how do you really fix that really? So you've got two options. You uh, freeze this with a freezing kit. Which most people don't have, do they? Most have. And you remove this and put a new one on. That's what you do. Or your other alternative is to start draining the entire system down. And you would do that by finding one of these, which we call the pipe tail, you can see it there, there, and you put a piece of hose on, and there's a little nut there, and you undo that, and that will empty your entire central heating system. Just to replace one balancing valve yeah, just thing, one. which is crazy. I'm just going to mention one more thing to you. It's, it's November 2023, and winter's coming. So, just in the event you have a radiator leak, 
just one radiator and it's leaking from the back say or a pipe just turn this off that'll stop any more water coming to this radiator or wherever the radiator is that might just help you out anyway <coughs> we've made this video uh, to hopefully help you along a little bit and save some money this um, as I say just before we sign it off this is this is Ferno, Fernox LSX it's a joint and compound and external leak see, see that it works on co cold and hot systems and we cannot recommend it enough it's so good so if you had a leak around here we've used it in the past on, haven't we a lot it'll get you out of trouble it's just really and even if you're putting stuff together you can put a bit on I always do yeah just as a precaution yeah. yeah it's really good stuff anyway hopefully this has helped you a little bit um, and save some money. Or giving you some ideas on how to go about yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes plumbing isn't that complicated. Just having the tools, uh, the right tools, and uh, just doing a bit of research. Because a lot of it, you can buy the tools. It's not, you know, boiler repair and that's a skill job. Don't yeah, get me definitely. wrong. Putting heating system in, that's a skill job, and you need to know what you're doing. But some basic stuff like this, you can do it yourself. You can do it yourself. Yeah. Hence, Every sells it. You'll find a lot of the trade tools at Screw Fix and Tool Station, and a lot cheaper than anything else. And obviously, watch a few videos might be helpful to you. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if this has helped you keep warm or leak free this year, uh, subscribing does help us along quite a bit. Um, if you could press that button, and if you like the video, that'd be appreciated as well. Thanks for watching.